Welcome everyone, it's Kevin from Vintique Sound, and today I want to talk about a little issue that I run into basically every time I upgrade Cubase. Now I can't remember exactly how it happened in previous upgrades, but in this one I had to forfeit the old license from my previous version of Cubase to get this version of Cubase uh, Pro 12, which means that I couldn't go back and open up my old version of Cubase to see what all my preferences were, all the things that I've sort of customized, and then uh, transfer over that information to Cubase Pro 12. And once I opened up Cubase 12, obviously everything is just all default settings. So there is some things that you can do to mitigate this. And one, one thing that's great about it is that Cubase does have a bunch of files that are stored on your computer that basically store all of your presets and all that stuff. So I'm going to go over that to just describe where to go, what to what files you need to sort of transfer over depending on your situation. So for me there's a few more important things. I'd say like three really big things. One of them is the project templates. I basically design all these project templates exactly the way that I want in the way that I work and when they disappear it takes a while to remember and try and figure out what I had set up to begin with. Um, there are huge time savers so that's one of them. Another thing is uh, the preferences in general so the way that Cubase behaves like when I play the, uh, the audio and then I stop it, I want the playback, the uh, transport to go back to where it was to begin with. That's just the way that I like it. There's also the default colors that I like having set as my own kind of palette of colors and, and the way that I work is like very systematic in the way that I like to, to color my projects. And there's a few other colors like this like grayish brown that I use for folders and group tracks and stuff. So that's another huge one. So without further ado, uh, Steinberg does have a very handy help support page that describes basically everything you need to know. So first off, depending on the system that you're running, the operating system, either Mac or Windows, it has the uh, file or folder locations. So for Mac, it's going to be under your username, then library, then preferences. On Windows, it's a little tricky. Um, you can use the run command prompt, or you can just type in the actual uh, folder location here in your, uh, in your file explorer. So even if you just go percent app data, oops, helps if you spell it right, percent data and just hit enter. Then it gives you all the roaming app data for all the programs and then you go into the Steinberg folder. So this, I'm running a Windows, so yeah, as you can tell. Uh, so I'm just gonna cover what it looks like on a Windows. It probably has very similar, um, you can follow along if you, even if you're on a Mac. Now the other really helpful information, obviously, is this section, which depending on what you want to port over, uh, particular settings are stored in these particular files. So for me, the color setup default is uh, one thing that I really want to, to port over. Uh, this defaults.xml does have, I think, more information. It's not just colors, as you can see here, the preferences is in defaults. So you just have to keep in mind that when you're transferring over some of these files, there might be overlap and you just have to be aware that um, if I'm rewriting, so for instance, like this default file, what I would have to do is go into my old version of Cubase 11, find the defaults.xml, copy and paste it into the Cubase 12. So it's overriding the default file for Cubase 12. So I'm no longer, uh, I'm rewriting a lot of stuff. So all the preferences, all the, the colors information, and probably more than I am 
kind of aware of. So uh, what I would suggest maybe is to do the following thing is to anytime you're copying over something from 11 to 12 or from your old version to your new version, what I would do is just either rename this defaults, oops, don't open it, rename it to something else, let's say defaults 12, and then you know that when you move over this file, um, you know that this is the original one before you made any changes. Then you can open up Cubase with this uh, copied over file see if it behaves the way that you expected and has all of the preferences exactly the way that you want and nothing sort of went wrong and then i mean it's it's probably pretty easy to just change back to a particular setting like let's say somewhere in the preferences there's like one or two things that was changed you just go and change it save your uh preferences and then move on and you don't even have to revert to your um, def Cubase 12 defaults file. So that's uh, the defaults uh, file. There's also, like I said, the project templates. So I actually just rebuilt mine from the ground up and just renamed them. Um, I did actually also rebuild the default colors from the ground up because I like the default colors, but I want to add more and I want to change the um, what do you call it, like the hue or the saturation. So I just rebuilt it from the ground up, renamed the projects. But if I, you know, for instance, this one here, I have a, a Deep House uh, production preset or a template that I like. So I just have to copy that and paste it in here. And now Cubase, when I open it in the project templates, that will now be that will now show up there. So I have it under the production, see? So that wasn't there before. Now there's a few other things. There's like a few small things, I think. So for instance, the key command presets, I think I have changed some things just slightly, like maximum, maybe five different key commands. That's that's one thing, but uh, actually, you know what? There's, there's another one that I'm just spotting here that is one of the main reasons <laughs> why I was looking for this stuff. Uh, and why I'm really frustrated because the external effects that you set up in Cubase and the VST studio settings, I think it is, or audio connections. So in here, you know, you can set up your inputs, your outputs, you have presets, but the external instruments and external effects don't have presets. And for me, that is kind of annoying and, and one of the uh, frustration because I have I think something like 20 yeah 24 outputs on my uh, audio interface uh, obviously I don't use all of them and inputs as well but I do have quite a lot and I I have I have to use the like I have a snake that breaks out from a DB25 connector and it's very difficult for me to always remember exactly what the number is because on the breakout from the DB25, it will be numbered one through eight. But if I want one through eight on, on the computer, then I have to sacrifice like my uh, normal inputs one through eight. And those have to be named like nine through whatever 14 or 16 so either way i'm sort of juggling in my mind these like all these cross reference of numbers and i always forget what my <laughs> uh, warm audio bus compressors settings are which is 15 and 16 on the output but it's 13 and 14 on the input so i, I think i'm just going to change this around so that it it makes more sense and i remember um but one thing you can do is you can move over those presets. So if you go into, actually, let's follow the guide. External effects and in instruments uh, setups, which is external plugins. So if I go here to external plugins, drag and drop that into this section, which I'm not going to do because I've already set up uh, my external effects. But so that 
would save you the headache of having to remember what everything was set up. If you have like, I don't know, a, a giant rack of external uh, effects and stuff, that would be a huge headache that you can save. Just transfer it over and don't have to worry about anything and move on with your audio production or mixing or whatever you're doing. A couple other things, so media-based stuff. I know I had set up in Cubase before. Um, if I open up here, there I had like a, a, a set amount of settings where to find the actual uh, samples and, and music library that I typically work with. That was not set properly. Now it's back to what I actually wanted, but you can transfer over media bay information. There's a whole ton of things that you can do. So uh, what I'll do, I'll, I'll just leave this link to the guide, this uh, support help page down in the description below uh, and uh, have a look at yourself. If you decide to upgrade, just know that there is hope. <laughs> Uh, once you open up Cubase, do not be alarmed. You can always get your uh, settings from previous versions. Just transfer over the files as per the guide here, and you'll be good to go. And I guess maybe just one final note. Um, what is kind of interesting or strange is that some of the settings do transfer over to the new version of Cubase. And I think one of those was... Uh, let me see if it's the effects chains. Yeah, these the effects chains and a couple different things with mixing and and stuff. Those were retained and transferred over to the new version. Um, so I'm I'm just curious what what it is Steinberg does. Like if they're if they just want to transfer over the stuff that um, will be least destructive in nature. Maybe that's the the idea behind it. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, either way, I hope you found that helpful. I know I was, uh, I'm reminded every time I upgrade, I get all excited from all the new features, open up the new version and nothing is the way that I want it. And then I, I can't just go in and start working like normal. I have to go back and redo a whole bunch of work and try to remember what it was in the past. Luckily you can open previous projects and th certain things like the the colors will still be there. So you can import the colors from a previous project and then save those as default. Uh, also, the VST settings or the um, audio connection settings typically will be set up the way that you had. And then you can save that as a preset. So you can you can do a slight workaround on some of these things to get back the settings that you had and not have to redo some of the work. But like I said, this is uh, this stuff right here is the, the real meats and potatoes of going back and transferring over what you had. So, okay, that was a long video, <laughs> but hope you liked it. Uh, thank you very much for watching and take care. See you in the next one. Bye-bye. Uh,